The Mouse That Roared, Disney and the End of Innocence, by Henry A. Giroux delves deep into the multifaceted impact of Disney on American culture and society. Giroux presents a critical analysis of Disney's role in shaping the collective imagination and the implications it has for our understanding of innocence, childhood, and contemporary issues. In this literary analysis, I will explore key themes and arguments presented in the text. Giroux argues that Disney plays a pivotal role in constructing a particular notion of innocence in American society. He contends that Disney has been instrumental in shaping a sanitized, nostalgic, and idealized vision of childhood and innocence. By examining Disney's animated films, Giroux highlights how they depict a world that is often free from the complexities and challenges of the real world. Through characters like Mickey Mouse and Cinderella, Disney promotes a vision of innocence that is rooted in simplicity, fairy tale endings, and a rejection of the harsh realities of life. Giroux sees this portrayal of innocence as problematic, as it creates unrealistic expectations and fosters a desire for escapism rather than critical engagement with the world. Moreover, Giroux argues that Disney's commodification of childhood innocence has far-reaching implications. He suggests that Disney's relentless marketing and merchandising of its characters and stories contribute to the commercialization of childhood. Children are bombarded with Disney products and experiences from an early age, and this, according to Giroux, erodes the boundaries between childhood and consumer culture. The commodification of innocence, he posits, serves corporate interests more than the well-being of children. Giroux also examines the influence of Disney on the construction of gender roles and racial stereotypes. He points out that Disney's portrayal of princesses and heroes often reinforces traditional gender norms, with female characters frequently depicted as passive and in need of rescue. Similarly, Giroux contends that Disney's early films perpetuated racial stereotypes, as seen in characters like the Siamese cats in Lady and the Tramp or the crows in Dumbo. These representations, Giroux argues, contribute to the perpetuation of harmful stereotypes and biases. Furthermore, Giroux highlights Disney's role in shaping a particular vision of history. He argues that Disney's historical films, such as Pocahontas and The Lion King, often distort or oversimplify complex historical narratives, presenting them through a Eurocentric lens that can perpetuate ignorance and cultural insensitivity. These distortions, he claims, contribute to a broader trend of historical amnesia in American culture, where sanitized versions of history are promoted, and critical engagement with the past is discouraged. Giroux also draws attention to Disney's political influence and its ability to shape public opinion. He asserts that Disney, as a powerful media conglomerate, has a vested interest in promoting certain ideologies and values. The company's media outlets, including ABC and ESPN, often reflect the interests of their parent company, furthering a corporate and consumerist agenda. Giroux argues that this creates a media environment in which critical and diverse voices are marginalized, and dominant narratives that align with corporate interests are privileged. In The Mouse That Roared, Giroux calls for a more critical and nuanced engagement with Disney and its cultural influence. He urges readers to recognize the complexity of the Disney phenomenon and to be mindful of the messages and values embedded in Disney's stories, characters, and products. Giroux encourages a re-evaluation of the idealized innocence Disney promotes and a more thoughtful consideration of the impact of Disney on our culture and society. In conclusion, The Mouse That Roared, Disney and the End of Innocence, by Henry A. Giroux provides a thought-provoking analysis of Disney's influence on American culture and society. Giroux's critique encompasses various aspects, from the construction of childhood innocence to the perpetuation of gender and racial stereotypes, 
and from the distortion of history to the corporate and political influence of Disney. This book invites readers to examine the role Disney plays in shaping our collective imagination and to be more discerning consumers of the narratives and values it presents. It serves as a call to action to engage with Disney and its cultural significance with a critical and informed perspective.